Hey everyone, this is Three Questions with Jeannie Lazzarini. There you go. <laughs> oh, music. Yeah, I, I knew you. <laughs> so Jeannie and I have been connecting. I I can't even remember. It seems like forever, to be honest. Yeah, it does. With email and stuff like that. It's the first time we've ever sat down and actually had a conversation. Even though yeah. we're not in the same room. Yeah. Uh, it, is, it is great to connect with you. And I will tell you, um, if anyone, if you know Jeannie, uh, if, if you've ever met her, she is one of the most, I, I don't know how you do it on email. You have like, you're the most enthusiastic email writer ever. So it it yeah. is uh, something I really appreciate. But uh, Jeannie has a ton of, of experiences in different fields, not only in education, um, but I, like in one thing I'll tell you, we were talking about your excitement for math and I don't know what you did, but I'm like, I'm kind of excited about math. Right now. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, it's pretty hard to do. So I'm, I'm excited to kind of dig into that. Um, but before we get into the longer podcast, uh, I do want to hear about some of your inspiration, some of the you know people that inspired you along your way. So when you think about your teaching career and all the people that you know you've got really excited about the profession, when you think of a teacher that inspired you, who's someone you think of and why? Well, I wish I could remember his name. <laughs> I've been yeah. Looking through my past yearbooks, I can't find it. Uh, but it was a teacher in my uh, sophomore year in high school, and I was taking trigonometry. And suddenly everything just clicked. And what I liked about it was he was very open-minded. He wasn't condescending to anybody. He made people feel like everybody had a chance to, to ask questions and there was no mm. judgment. I just learned a lot from him. Actually, after I got my teacher credential, I went back and I TA'd for him a little bit too. Um, but yeah, that was great. He really, and I've always had a, a love of math, but I was very shy and he kind of helped me to get out of that. And I would get up in front of the class and have to do presentations. And I actually found that I liked it. The whole thing came from a teacher. <laughs> well, yeah. And when, it's funny because like I've talked quite a bit about the idea that we really have to tap into kids' passions and strengths. Right. And yes. I think that's something that's really, really important. But I also yes. think there's that balance of exposing kids to things that they might not know they're interested in as well. And I think we, it's, it, that's the, that's the trick, yes. right? Because, Definitely. because I think, you know, <laughs> if you think about my kids' passions at five years old, right? Yeah. Like, is, is she going to just design Mr. Potato Heads for the rest of her life? <laughs> like, like, like that, yeah. you know, like it, it is kind of finding some of those elements uh, yeah. uh, of different and exposing that too. So like, I, I, I love the stories about, you know, a person that saw that something in me, that passion, but also said like, hey, this person struggled with this a little bit. How can I actually help them? So uh, this is a, this is the first time. I don't know. This is the first time I'm giving a shout out to an unknown <laughs> teacher. But if you're out there, if you're a genius <laughs> teacher, you, let's see a random teacher. Uh, you know, maybe <laughs> they'll hear this and, and and you'll reconnect. And so, um, when you think about like an administrator, right? Whether is when you're a student, you know, when you worked in schools, who's someone that you think of that really inspired you and why? It's funny. I had a few teachers that were, you know, very focused on girls getting ahead in the world of math and, and other fields mm -hmm. that normally at that time when I was a kid was not popular. It wasn't something that, you know, most girls would be interested in. And uh, I, I really took that to heart because I wanted to, I, for some reason, I wanted to break the mold. I wanted to make sure mm -hmm. that I could succeed in anything I chose to put my mind to. And I've carried that with me throughout my whole life. I really have. And it really helped me be a better teacher down the road. And so do you think like, do you think of a, an administrator that maybe inspired that someone you worked with that inspired that in you or you oh, know, got you rolling on that? A couple of my professors at Santa Clara University did oh. and also at UC Davis with the master's program. I, I really had some great models that yeah. uh, would just spend time with me and actually, out, you know, just talk about, what interests me and how I could bring that into the field and how I could bring out uh, the best in students too, with the interest that I have. Mm -hmm. And just seeing those connections really helped me uh, come out of my shell and make it much better for every, everybody, including myself. Yeah. And I think for me, when you, when you talk about it in education, um, I, I think when we share our passions that some kids, if we're being honest, don't connect with our passions. Right. But I, I think yeah. there's more more that do, and yeah. you know, it, maybe they might not be interested in the same things that you you are. But this that feeling of like, you know, when I do what I oh, want to yeah. do, I want to be excited like he is about what he's doing yes. or she is, you know, in, in her role. So uh, I oh, think yes. I think whatever your passion is, 
I think there's a real power. And one of the things when we talk about relationships in, in education, which I know both of us think are so paramount to the work that we do, it's not just about knowing the students in front of you. It's giving them the opportunity to like understand, you know, your excitement, your, your you know, yes. the things that you do because relationships yes. are a reciprocated thing, right? I think that's really important. And so you go back through all of your experiences in education to all the work that you do today. If you could go back and talk to your first year teacher self, what advice would you give yourself then? I would get to know my students and get let them get to know you. Let them get to know your hobbies, your interests. Uh, I did that all the time. I would just talk about myself, and I, I really love to swim, and I love to, I love to decorate, and I love to. I, do, I have a lot of things I'm interested in, but I find the joy in math and all those things, and, and that um, students want to feel heard and included, mm -hmm. and uh, to be cognizant of uh, their feelings, and take time to just work with them, set up a mutual respect, set up a I would always set up the room to be, and I would talk about this with them too, to be a safe haven. It's mm -hmm. a place you could come to and talk to me anytime. Um, we had certain rules in the class though, that we all had to abide by because of mutual respect uh, and things have to be turned in on time mm -hmm. at a certain date, whatever. So you have responsibilities in here. I had some firm uh, goals, but I had, I'm giving them like, the UDL thing, the flexible mm -hmm. means. And I was giving them opportunities during uh, class two to let them know that you can um, always make uh, opportunities for your students to learn in the ways that work best for them. Mm -hmm. We would talk about getting together as a team and what it meant to be a team player and, and what it means to be included and excluded and what, and how do you feel mm -hmm. about that when somebody does this or that? And just the whole thing about just getting your feelings and thoughts and your, um, your ideas about how it means to be a participant in a class. I wanted them to know that it wasn't my class, it's our class. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that one of my big questions I have, um, and it's really important to have ways of explaining this to other people, but I think to think of it yourself, so how do you see yourself as a teacher? Mm -hmm. Are you, led, do you lead by example or are you, do you see yourself as a sage on the stage? Don't be a sage on the stage. Nobody is. Nobody, you know, I'm, I'm older and I realize too, well, as I go, I still don't know everything, you know, right. you never will. And you don't, and you can't. And uh, I even had an experience one day in a geometry class, high school geometry, where I forgot something. I got this hmm. gra brain dead thing all of a sudden. I said, geez, you know, can somebody out there help me with this, this thing, you know, just like, right. and there was a girl in the class who just was always like very shy and quiet. And she raised her hand kind of meekly after a while. And she, I had her come up and she explained it to the class. Everybody clapped for her. She always participated from that point on. She, it was just great, you know, just little encouragement, just, you know, and let them know they're part of the team. We're all part of a team to right. learn together, you right. know, and uh, I might know some things, but you may know some things I never knew. Let me know what your interests are, though, too, you know, and if I had things that I didn't know anything about, I said I'd bring in experts from the field. So we, we right. did a lot of different, ex yeah, I had animators come to my class and talk about the gaming world and how they create, uh, how math's involved in that. Uh, I had uh, people from the banking industry talk about financial uses for mathematics. I had all kinds of things. We went to a, a a museum, an art museum nearby, which just coincidentally had happened to have an MC Escher exhibit, which we were studying at the time. We were making tessellations. So it was really cool because the kids saw, you know, that this is just really alive. It's all over the place. So for me, I guess I'm going on and on too much, but I think mutual respect, uh, simple. It would be great to have organizational skills, which mm -hmm. uh, aren't really taught necessarily. Uh, but think about how you want your classroom to look. Right. Think about how you're going to lay things out so it's easily accessible for you and the students. What if somebody finishes early? Can you have something going on somewhere else? Right. You know, I always had this little game area and uh, explain how that all works. Uh, what if everybody wants to answer you at one time? Well, I had this symbol using your hands. You know, I have a question. I have an answer. I have a comment. And I said, okay, if you raise your hand like that and I see that, if I can't answer you at the time, I am going to come right back to you. And I, mm. I will write in, in a good time. And so the kids learned how to do that. The students learned how to do that amongst themselves too, which really helped keep down the uh, 
you know, shouting over each other kind of thing. Right. Right. Is that, yeah. So there's a lot of little things like that, that I, they're not little, really, they are important. Well, one of the main things is that mistakes are really part of the process. Yeah. Honest yeah. to God, they are that you, you got to make mistakes and you got to stand back up and figure out, well, how can I make that even better? And so I would do a lot of projects with the students. We'd be building things, railroads and roller coasters and uh, shooting rockets and we're outdoors, indoors, doing all kinds of stuff, making Rube Goldberg machines out of weird stuff and mm -hmm. trying to solve problems. But um, it didn't always work the first time or the second time or whatever. And even if it didn't work, I wanted them to write down. I always had them have a journal. Write down what you learned. What did you reflect? Mm -hmm. Talk about it, you know, and then and then work in little groups. I like having team groups, you know, work together. And what if you don't like somebody in your team? Well, how do you learn to get to get along? All right. that stuff is important to think about before you get in the classroom so that uh, you keep it in your mind throughout the year. But I feel very important of all um, is to spend time getting to know your students at mm -hmm. least the first week. Yeah, and I think I think when you talk about this, like I, I look back at my first year of teaching, and it was my worst year of teaching because you know I, I knew so little. And yeah, um, but there's there's kids in that classroom that still connect with me and talk about the impact that I had. And I think um, the the thing that me you can too. always count on is building those connections and building that relationship. And kids know if you know if they know you care about them. Yes. Uh, you want them to be successful, they overlook a lot of those flaws. And it's yes. something that I think about a lot. And so, Jeannie, I, I appreciate you, you taking the time to share uh, your experiences. I'm looking forward to connecting with you more, learning more about your experience, uh, your passion for math, and you know how it can help teachers around the world. So, everyone, thank you so much for taking the time to listen. Jeannie, thank you so much <laughs> uh, for sharing your stories and being with us today. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks.